excuse me for a moment? Gladly. You know, it's funny, one's fantasies never turn out quite as one expects, do they? <laughs> I mean, I've always visualized you in a sports coat. Uh. <laughs> oh, God. Blanche, what's up? Why did you want me to read your play? 
I stole the leading character from you. Which one? Well, you know, the high-spirited, but basically nice girl you used to write in the 50s? The one who always had to decide whether to hold on to her virginity or forfeit it at the final curtain. Do you remember her? Of course, Patty, Sally, Mary. Why do they all have such short names? They're easy to type. Oh, well. <laughs> Whatever happened to her? Well, she always successfully defended her virginity, married the leading man, moved to Scarsdale, had 2.7 children, and lived happily ever after. Exactly. But, what if she didn't live happily ever after? Supposing, 20 years from then, today, she's gone through a divorce. Now, in her late 30s, still attractive, she's thrust into a whole <coughs> new sexual morality and a whole new world. How does she cope with that? The girl in the back seat. Well, that's where most of us end up defending our honor, isn't it? <laughs> what do you know about 50 sexual mores? Aren't you part of the permissive 60s? No, no, I'm quite backwards, at least in that way. Anyways, I stole your leading character, I did 20 years or so, and took it from there. Well, you don't know how to construct a scene, and your dialogue is stilted. You can tell all that from three pages? Look, I do hope you're not going to be sensitive. Why do you say my dialogue is stilted? Well, the girl says, purchase instead of buy, obtain instead of get, and plot instead of trouble. People don't talk like that. I do. Well, you're an English teacher from a small village in Vermont, and I have the suspicion you're quite eccentric. Ah, you spotted that, did you? <laughs> you know that about yourself? Well, no, I was just saying that so I wouldn't appear sensitive. <laughs> Look, when I said that you were <coughs> eccentric, I meant it as a compliment. Uh, thank you. I think you're eccentric, too. Why? Well, you do peculiar things when you're alone. So <coughs> No, I just said that to lessen your embarrassment. Miss Craig, you have a warped view of life. Is that another compliment? Essential if you want to write comedy, but it's only a start. Yes. Well, I certainly appreciate you taking your time out to see me. Ms. Craddock, would you stop teaching and move to New York to work with me? I thought you said you hated my play. Why would you think that? You said my dialogue stilted and I don't know how to construct a scene. My dialogue is brilliant. You mean, you really want to work with me? Well, I'm not sure. <coughs> Look, you better sit down. Ms. Craddock, what do you think the theater is? Um, a celebration <coughs> of the human condition. No, oh, that's not what I'm talking about. Are you single? Yes. Plan on getting married? Eventually. That's not good enough. I didn't realize this was an exam. Look, I'm not talking about you and I becoming Will and Ariel Durant, but I don't want to invest in a partnership and then have you suddenly get the urge to become a nursing mother. I see. No, you don't. You don't know a damn thing about the theater. The working conditions are intolerable. The people that you have to deal with are egocentric maniacs, and it's filled with rejections on every level. When you're writing comedy, the opposite of success is not failure, it's embarrassment. And it's very public. They write headlines, Miss Craddock. <coughs> All right, and that's the pleasant part. You'll be working with me, and I'm a difficult person. In fact, some people think I'm impossible. I'm obsessive, moody, arrogant, rarely satisfied. And my own mother once said I lack warmth. Would you be willing to accept those conditions? Uh, it sounds like fun. All right, damn it. <laughs> we'll give it a try. <coughs> I just have one question. Why are you so angry? Well, what do you expect? You barge in here unannounced, disrupt my life, and then you have the gall to be talented. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've made certain plans, and also this damn tie won't talk. Well, maybe I can help. My mother died when I was young, so I have been tying my father and three brothers' ties since then. I can cook darn socks and even cut hair if required. A uh, simple Windsor knot will do for now. Oh. There. <coughs> Not my type at all, you know. Uh, fine state of affairs. Two minutes before our wedding, I discovered my fiancé with another woman. Allison, <laughs> you shouldn't be here. Oh, I don't believe in those old superstitions. <laughs> I just had to find out that you're as terrified as I am. <laughs> I don't believe we've met. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Miss... <laughs> I'd like you to meet... My fiance. <laughs> Allison, I didn't catch your name. <laughs> Craddock, um, PJ. Phoebe. <laughs> Miss Craddock is going to be my new writing partner. When did this happen? What happened? 
Oh, 